Welcome back to Gracie Schwartzwald. I'm here with Erkan Mete. We're going to continue with our complete Gracie Jiu Jitsu course. And uh, we're going to cover right now another step in the timeline of headlock defense. And this, all these headlock defenses right now are focused on escaping the headlock. So we're not fighting back. We're not putting them into submissions or throws. This is just staying on your feet, getting out of the hold, getting away. Okay, we'll cover those other ones later in the course. Um, but this should always be your first uh, focus if you can is just to if you can't avoid a conflict I want to stay in the conflict as little time as possible the more time I stay in the more chance it goes wrong and I can't just go hey hey let me tap or it's been four minutes can I take a break you've got to get out as soon as possible okay so in this situation we've covered this timeline which is if he goes for a headlock is not even letting him get an arm around my head if he does get an arm around my head not letting him lock his hands. The same one, by the way, if he grabs me, that we use for our punch block. Because the same motion he'll hold the head and hit me is the same motion he'll hold his head, lock, hold the head and lock his hands. Okay. The next one is he's able to lock his hands. We need to keep our posture. Okay. The next problem in the timeline comes when he locks his hands and he's able to pull me down. What I tell people all the time is when somebody has you in a hold, okay, the one thing you have to do is avoid panicking. And the problem is when somebody puts you in a headlock and they're squeezing really tight, it's a, it's a panicking situation, whether it's standing or on the ground. The thing is, when, though, is anytime I'm holding my opponent, we've talked about this before, move. If he moves, I move, right? So even though I'm holding him, in a sense, he's also holding me. So you always want to be in a position of maximum leverage in order to break a hold. Okay, so um, when I'm standing, I have decent leverage. He grabs me right here. I have decent leverage now to break this hold. If I was bent over like this and then I try to do the same move, I have no leverage. So most of the time that you get grabbed in a headlock and bent over, you're probably going to have to go to the ground. Because only then, when you're on the ground and you can get on top, then you'll have the leverage to break the hold. So we're either going to, he grabs me a headlock, I get bent over. I'm either going to have to try to get my leverage back, or I'm going to have to go to the ground. Okay? Ideally, of course, is I don't ever let him break my posture, right? which is why, again, I, re I can't emphasize this part enough. You practice keeping your posture. Don't get lazy and practice this. Any more than I get lazy, you know, and just leave my arm sitting on top of the person's uh, uh, body when I'm in their guard to let them just arm lock me. Okay, I need to be aware of where my arms are. So, as I said, most of these skates we have to do, we have to go to the ground. But right now, that's not the focus. We don't want to go to the ground. We'll cover that later. There is one possibility, okay? And that is he gets me bent over. And again, I'm holding this arm. If I just let go and I'm over here messing around, there's a chance he can punch me with his hand. Decide he wants to start blasting me in the face. If he's just holding me and maybe trying to sling me around, I can, do, I can maybe get away with this. Again, this is not our go-to, but if it's there, I'm going to take it. Okay. So I'm holding the waist and I'm holding here. Okay. Most of the time, if I can't get my head posture up, I can't get to the side. That's another problem, right? Here, when I'm completely sideways to him, it's very hard for him to break my posture. If he breaks my posture, though, it's hard for me now to turn back to face him, okay? But in some senses, I can use that to my advantage. Okay, so he grabs me, I hold, no thumb. I'm holding his waist. So he tries to pull me around, throw me down. Here, we're moving around. If I feel him stop for a second, and what will happen a lot of times, and this is true on the ground with submissions, guys will get something, a choke or something, and it's not really there, they're squeezing, and you'll feel them relax for a second in order to squeeze again and maybe adjust. And that's kind of what I'm looking for, is that moment where he relaxes for just a second. So he grabs me, hold on tight, hold on tight, okay, good. And when I feel that relaxing, okay, Here's what I'm going to do. 
my hand, my shoulder, I'm going to shoulder bump him forward. I'm going to tuck my head down. This isn't really to protect the choke. There's no choke, by the way, here. But it's just to make this uh, as level as possible. So I don't want my head up where he's going to run into, his arm is going to run into the back of my head. So I'm here. Let's turn. Oh. And I'm going to bump here. Okay. It doesn't seem like it would work, but it works really well. It's holding on tight. I'm going to bump him forward. I can even take a little step here. Okay. Now, I personally will cover this in the counterattack, but you can still do this in a sense, depending on the, on the scenario. I want you guys always focused on this. I come here. He has me. Hold tight. Hold tight. Hold tight. Here. Okay. I lower. And what's doing this, let me turn this way so they can kind of see. Hold on. Is it's this. I, I turn my elbow over so I can drive my shoulder in. Here. Now, sort of interestingly enough, can't do this when I have my posture. So he pulls me down. I can actually go out here. Okay? And this is actually very similar to headlock escapes you might do on the ground if the guy is holding you sometimes. Half guard or any of these sorts of positions. So why might I hold on to him? And notice when I hold on to him, I bump. I'll actually pull him back, control and control. And I'll move my head to the other side. I don't want to get into a fight situation. So why would I even bother that? And I won't often. If the exit's this way, okay, this is where our, our awareness of our surroundings comes in, right? If I'm fighting him and I bump him off, but the exit is here, well, now I got a problem. The exit's there, I'll bump him off and go. If the exit, however, is there, hold on tight. I might hold here so I can move him around. And here, notice when I do this, by the way, we'll cover this position later. My head is on this side looking. So if he tries to elbow me, elbow me with the other arm. Yeah. So I don't want to bump him off and have my head here. So as soon as I'm here and I bump, I move my head to that side. Okay, let's do it from this side. I'm here, hold on tight. Here. So I'll hold on really tight. I got... It's here, okay? So, again, I'm not always gonna get away with this. Here, bump, um, but I will catch it, especially we're here, the guy grabs me, he says, I'm moving around, he stops for a second. That's when you're gonna go, okay? And that is our headlock to escape. Person has you bent over, 